My name is Mark Miner. I am an investigative writer and author. In my travels, I've investigated many people and places. Watch as I seek out stories that are typically outside of the box of normal. I am the Seeker. Hi guys, I just wanted to stop by and get some breakfast before I head out. And I just I found this really cool place called Christie's 50s Diner in Lebanon on Main Street. So I'm going to show you what this place looks like. And this is my breakfast. I went kind of light today because you know I've got to watch the weight. I told you guys I was going to try to lose the weight. So anyways, I'm going to finish my breakfast and then I'm going to head on to my location, which is a surprise. So you got to stay, stay around to find, figure out where I'm going. Right? Thanks guys. Hey everybody, so I am at Newport Beach and we are covering one of the most heinous murders that happened on the Oregon coast. So here we are in Newport, Oregon and as you can see with the coastline and with the buildings around it. So today we're going to talk about Bobby Jack Fowler. Bobby Jack Fowler had, is from Texas. He was actually born June 12th, 1939, and his dates of murder ranged from 1973 to 1995. So Bobby would travel all up and down the West Coast uh, to look for his victims, including into Canada. So he, he was one of the most infamous serial killers to ever reside in the Pacific Northwest. He was eventually linked by DNA evidence to the murders of two teenage girls and also became the prime suspect in the disappearance of two other teenage girls who were murdered in 1992. So, Bobby Jack Fowler was a very disturbed man. He was often not well liked as a child and often had problems as a teenager. So I'm going to read kind of what was on the website here. So his method of murder was strangulation. Uh, like I said, he's been all up and down the West Coast. Uh, he also was a rapist. He was a serial killer, obviously a murderer, um, through the strangulation. Um, Fowler was a transient construction worker who is known to have traveled extensively across North America. He spent time rabbiting around North America to such places as British Columbia, 
Florida, Iowa, Louisiana, Texas, Oregon, South Carolina, Arizona, Tennessee, and Washington State. During his travels, he developed an extensive criminal record. And is known to have committed several violent crimes. I'm going to take off my glasses here. So let me finish here. An alcoholic, amphetamine, and methamphetamine user, Howler's criminal record ranged from attempted murder and sexual assault to fire some offenses, firearm offenses, excuse me. In 1969, he was charged with murdering a man and woman in Texas, but was only convicted of discharging a firearm within city limits. Fowler also spent time in the Tennessee prison for sexual assault and attempted murder because, in the words of an investigator, he tied a woman up, beat the hell out of her with his own belt, covered her with brush, and left her to die on the side of a road. He liked to travel far and wide in beat up old cars, frequently picked up hitchhikers, and spent time in bars and motels. Fowler believed that women he came into contact with, with hitchhiking, and in bars wanted to be sexually assaulted, he claimed. So let's, let's walk down a little bit. So his suspected victims, Fowler is a suspect or person of interest in at least 16 murders in British Columbia. And Oregon, dating as far back as 1969. I do apologize for the wind here. It is the Oregon coast, so you're going to get a lot of that wind. So he goes on what's called the Highway of Tears. Fowler is a suspect in the Highway of Tears murders. His DNA was found in the body, on the body, excuse me, of Colleen McMillan. one of the presumed victims. Fowler is also strongly suspected to have killed both Gail Ways and Pamela Darlington. In 1973, the RCMP believed that he may have also killed as many as 10 other victims. And possibly as many as 20. Potential Canadian victims include mostly First Nation girls reported missing from Highway 16, a 724-kilometer roadway dubbed the Highway of Tears. Due to the high number of murders and disappearances of young women beginning in the 1970s, however, three of those murders occurred after Fowler's imprisonment in 1996. So did he have a partner or did he do these things on his own? I guess we'll never know. So let's go up a little bit further, get in a crowd here. On May 3rd, 1992, just after midnight, around 1 a.m., Sheila Swanson, 19, and Melissa Sanders, 17, were last seen making a call from a payphone near the Beverly Beach State Park where they had been camping. I did pass that on the way from Newport. Um, I just didn't stop there. Their bodies were later discovered on October 10th, 1992, by hunters in a wooded area near Eddyville, Oregon. Let's cross the street here. It's really pretty. You see the coast out there. I'm trying to find a good spot to do this, but everybody keeps walking up on me. <laughs> Maybe they think I'm some kind of a celebrity. Who knows? So, uh, let's get up here. Okay. All right, guys. On June 28th, 1995, just after midnight around 1 a.m., Jennifer Essen, 16, and Kara Les, Lise, 16, are last seen walking on Northwest 56th Street in Newport, Oregon. 
walking toward Highway 101 near Mulock Beach after leaving a friend's house. Their strangled bodies were later discovered on February 15, 1995 by loggers in a wooded area covered up with brush. There seems to be an MO with them. So the arrest and investigation of Bobby Fowler was done on June 28, 1995. He was arrested following an incident which involved a woman jumping out of a window. at the Tides Inn Motel in Newport, Oregon. Now, I did search extensively for this motel, but it doesn't seem to exist anymore. However, it's 2022. This is back in 1995. So, it, that's probably what happened. She survived the attack and reported her harrowing tale to the local police. On January 8, 1996, Fowler was convicted of kidnapping in the first degree, attempted rape in the first degree, sexual abuse in the first degree, coercion, assault in the fourth degree, and menacing. He was sentenced to 195 months. Now that's 16 years and three months with the possibility of parole. He got off pretty easy on that. On the 25th of September 2012, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and Lincoln County District Attorney Rob Bubbitt named Bobby Jack Fowler as a suspect in the three of the Highway of Tears murders. His DNA was found on the body of Colleen McMillan, one of the presumed victims. So Bobby, Bobby Fowler did go to prison. He, uh, he was not a well man. Um, he, let me get this situated here. I got, I need more hands than I do anything. So after serving some time in prison, he eventually passed away from lung cancer. It is believed that he's responsible as for 20 murders during a 20 year period. So he's a very heinous man. He looked for his victims all up and down the West Coast, including Canada and possibly other states. He did do time down in Louisiana, as I stated, and was suspected of murdering a woman, a man in Texas, as I've stated before. So this man had a, had a hard life, but this man was a very heinous murderer. So that's, that's the serial killer of Bobby, J Bobby Jack Fowler. Um, we're gonna move on to another famous murder here on the coast. Um, I don't know why they seem to be flocking towards the coastal areas, but uh, yeah. That's, so that's just one of the main serial killers you'd hardly ever hear of in the state of Oregon. All right, guys. So I want to thank you so much for joining with me and thank you for putting up with the wind. And I want to just send a shout out to Miles. His name is Miles Peck. This guy's an awesome cook, an awesome chef. And thanks a lot, Miles, for all the interest and all the great conversations. So remember guys, stay weird, be weird, be proud to be weird. Just not so weird like Bobby Jack Fowler. It's a little too weird. All right, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you soon.